So I recently got my hands on this big old electric motor. It's a Delco motor. It was my grandfather's and apparently it was his dad's as well. So we really have no idea how old the thing is. But it does have all the characteristics you'd expect. It's super heavy. It's got a bunch of rust all over it. And of course it's got the cord that's just wrapped in a whole bunch of electrical tape. So the first thing we got to do is let's see if this thing even turns on. Plug it in and yeah it actually spins up great. So it looks like there's nothing physically wrong with it. We're just going to give this thing a nice little cosmetic cleanup and make it looking as good as new. So the first step into cleaning it up is I just grabbed some hand towels and began to scrub it down and try to get off as much as the grime as I could. And you can see a lot of pretty nasty stuff came off of it. But even a quick little scrub down with the towel made this thing looking so much better. I grabbed a small allen key and began to untighten the little pulley wheel in the front of the motor so that when I gave it a little pull it would come off. And it's just a little 3 inch wheel. I have no idea if it's original with the motor. I took a small little ratchet and began to take off the feet that are holding the motor upright and it just has a couple bolts that hold it on in place and they easily come off. They definitely have a bit of grime on them and they definitely need to be cleaned. I then took off the back leg of the motor and you can see there's a bit of grime and rust on this part as well. And for cleaning the screws I'm going to try something new. I got a container full of white vinegar and I'm just going to let it soak for 24 hours. There were still a couple more screws holding the motor in place so I just grabbed a simple flathead and just began to take them out. And these screws were pretty long, they ran the whole length of the motor, and they pinched the two halves together. So I took out the other three bolts, I cleaned some of the grime off of them because these ones were pretty gross, and then I just let them soak in the vinegar as well. So with the four long screws removed, the motor should just easily come apart. There was definitely some movement and rotation between all of the parts, and then I realized there's this little kind of collar on the front shaft. So I just took a screwdriver and I wedged it off and I removed it and now the motor should just easily come apart and I found these small little indents I could fit a screwdriver in and I just gently tapped on it with a hammer and I just popped off the front. It did leave a little bushing or bearing behind on the shaft so I just took it off and I placed it back exactly where I found it. And now with the front off of the motor we can get a good view of the internals of it. It seems that it rotates nice and freely and we can see the cool coiling of the wires and it's definitely covered in a bunch of sawdust and grime. On the back of the motor there was like a press fit washer that I tried to remove with the screwdriver. I didn't try too hard because I didn't want to just mangle it up and I ended up deciding it was worth it to just leave it on there. Since there was no longer any bolts holding it together I was able to just slide the coil off. It was being held in place by a couple wires which is to be expected and I looked at them and they were pretty nasty and actually had some splits in them so I decided it was best if I took some scissors and just cut them now so I could easily take it off and replace them later. And since I had the scissors out now I decided it was best to cut off the old extension cord because we're going to be replacing that as well. And we're finally able to get a good view of the inner workings of the motor. It seems that the bushings are still really nice and fluid inside of it and I'm happy about that. You can definitely see along these little fans right here there's just a whole bunch of caked on grime and all this nasty stuff. And if we go ahead and take a look at the coil itself it looks to be in really nice condition. There's some interesting like red lacquer all over the wires and there's a whole bunch of nasty just like dust bunnies all over everything. Definitely going to need a thorough cleaning. So I grabbed myself my toothbrush and began to brush the coil's teeth. I decided to use a soft bristle toothbrush just because I don't want to damage the lacquer on any of the wires because that could definitely ruin the motor. And it was kind of funny. It definitely felt like I was brushing someone's giant teeth or something. I used some ear cleaners for some of the more smaller parts to reach into and got out all the extra grossness. It was now time to try to remove the tag on the motor. I took a screwdriver and I was able to find the back side of the rivet. I just tapped out the first rivet. The second one was a lot tougher to get out but I ended up using some scissors to wedge it between it and popping it out and we get the nice little motor tag. So with the coil nice and clean it was time to work on the rotor. So I took the toothbrush and just began to clean every section that I could on it making sure I could get off all of the grime and dust and nasty particles that have been on there for years and years and years. I used some ear cleaners to reach inside of the holes and those came out with some nasty little dust bunnies on the end of them for sure. So with all of the dust and particles removed from the motors, it was time for the next step. I clamped each of the parts in a vise. I took a little wire brush and just began to wire brush everything, cleaning off all of the extra dirt and paint and any rust flakes that I could, getting it ready for the next part, which is going to be painting it. I laid out the parts on some cardboard and I began to spray paint them with some paint. I decided to spray paint the both end caps and the feet a nice black glossy paint. And I decided to paint the middle coil section a nice bright yellow paint just because I thought it looked pretty fun when it was all done. 
And the next day, with all the pieces dry, I think the paint turned out great on it. A nice thick coat of glossy paint on all the parts, making it shine and look almost brand new. And I really like that I went with yellow for the middle section. I think it turned out fantastic looking. It's time to check on how the hardware held up in the vinegar. And speaking of vinegar, I ended up using some vinegar to clean off the backing of the tag, and it accidentally took off a lot of the paint on the front of it. Honestly, it's a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. We're still going to use it. I wiped up all the vinegar from the rest of the pieces and they actually turned out looking really nice. I didn't have to do much work cleaning them and the vinegar really just ate off a bunch of the grime. So with all the parts cleaned and painted and looking brand new, it's time to start assembling it back together. And the first thing we gotta do is remove the old wires with a soldering iron. So with the old wires off, I went ahead and soldered on some new wires, nice and secure. Then I took the coil section, it was time to add on a new extension cord. So I took some of the old wire and I just cut it off and I went ahead and stripped the ends of it so it was getting ready for the new extension cord and I ended up just getting myself a generic two pole cord and I wanted to attach it with these interesting heat shriek tubings. They also have a bead of solder in the center of them so that when you slide both of the wires into them and you heat it up with a heat source, I'm just using a lighter but a heat gun is better. You can actually see the solder in the middle point melting, making a permanent connection between the wires, which I think is pretty cool. So I went ahead and did the same thing to the other side. I slipped a large piece of heat shrink tubing around the connections after, and then I melted that over it to make sure we have a nice solid connection for our new extension cord. So now it's time to merge the motor back together. I went ahead and slipped them into each other, and then I took the extension cord and I had to thread it through the back half of the motor, and now it's time to reconnect those wires. I cut off the extra that I don't need and I stripped the ends of them. And since the original wire is so old and made out of fabric, I put some heat shrink tubing over the old wire to act as like a new insulation barrier. And now for connecting these two wires together, I decided to use a crimp connection because I thought it was going to be easier. So I went ahead and inserted one end and crimped it. I inserted the other end and crimped it as well. And this just makes a really nice mechanical secure connection. And I just heated up the tubing around it to melt it together and make it nice and permanent. I went ahead and repeated the process on the other side, and now our wires are back together. I gently pushed back the back half and the coil together, and then I went ahead and placed on the front half, and after a little bit of general persuasion, I was able to get the front part back on it as well. And now it was time to screw it all back together. I took the long machine screws and I fit them through the holes, and then I just took the flathead screwdriver and just screwed them down nice and tight. Time to put its feet back on. I fed the extension cord through the back support and I placed it on where it needed to go and then I just ratcheted down all the screws. I placed the front foot on where it needed to be and I just ratcheted on those front bolts as well. And now it's got its own little feet again. I took the now faded tag from the motor and I decided to put it back on where it was and I used the same rivets that came with the motor. I just tapped them on into place and it still looked cool. I cut out and routed a small piece of wood then I took the motor and I placed it where I wanted it to sit. I took a pencil and I just marked where I needed to drill some holes. Then I used the technique of taking a roll of duct tape and drilling on top of it just so I won't drill into my table. I got some machine screws, locking washers, and an interesting spiky nut. And I'm going to use these to fix the motor to the wood. I placed the nuts into the holes on the bottom and I just pounded them into place. And these are going to help hold the motor down. I took some adhesive felt pads and placed them on each of the corners and this is just going to help hold it off of the table so it's not scratching anything. Since the motor isn't perfectly level I decided to take some thicker nuts and place the motor on top of it and this is just going to act as a spacer so that when I screw it down to the wood itself it's going to be nice and level. So I tightened everything down to the wood base and the motor was on there nice and secure. And now it's time to add the other part of the extension cord in this switch. It's just a nice switch that I've used in the past and I'm quite happy with them. So I go ahead and strip the end of the wire coming out of the motor. I thread it through one end of the enclosure for the switch. I crimp on some little fork connectors on the end of it. Add a bit of heat shrink tubing to make it nicer. And then I go ahead and just screw them on and connect them to the terminal block on the switch. I do the exact same for the other half of the extension cord. I close up the switch enclosure. I put in the four screws in the corners and then I make sure everything's nice and tight. I place the switch where I want it to go on the wooden board. I put in some small wood screws just by hand to tighten the switch down to make it permanent. And now it's time to test it out and see if it still works. I put a small piece of tape on the end of the motor. I plugged it into an extension cord. I flipped the switch and would you look at that. The thing still spins. It spins great. Looks as good as new. I'm really happy with how it turned out. But there is something I noticed on it. On the back half of the axle there's definitely a little bit of wiggle wiggle. I definitely think it got dropped somewhere in its history but it's really not that big of a deal. And the only thing left to do is to give it a name. I decided to name it Buzz, mostly because it looks like a bumblebee, and I just think it's really cool. 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Hope you just saw something cool or just enjoyed the process with me. Thanks for stopping by, everybody, and I'll catch you all in the next one.